I bow to all the seekers of truth. As you are seekers of truth, whatever one may tell you, you should not accept it to begin with. People can, people can claim anything, but that doesn't mean that you must believe into it. But one must know that truth is what it is. We cannot organize it, we cannot maneuver it, we cannot create it. It is and it was and it will be. And I told you yesterday what is the truth. And the truth is that you are the Spirit. You are not this body, you are not this conditionings, your ego, your emotions. You are the Spirit. This is one thing. And then <clears throat> there is a subtle power living power, power of God's love, that does all the living work. All the evolutionary work, all the creation and all the comforting and joyous things, which we do not feel, about which people have talked in every scripture. Like in the Bible we say it's the all-pervading power of God or in Quran they call it Gudram. In Sanskrit language it is called as Paramachaitan. In every religion, in every scripture which is sensible, is written about so the first thing one has to do is to feel that power. <coughs> Unless and until you can feel that power, you cannot understand any religion nor the people who came as incarnations or as prophets or as saints. And that is the reason why all the saints had to suffer all the incarnations had to suffer because the people in general ever knew there is a subtle power of God's love. As we say there is God the Father, God the Son, there has to be God the Mother. In every religion except for Christianity, they have openly talked about this primordial mother. Even the Greeks knew about it, Babylonians knew about it. I was surprised that even in South America there was a big, very big awakening about it. And they used to worship the Mother God. But somehow in Christianity, I think it was Paul who was a Roman to begin with and a tyrannical officer who even killed a disciple of Christ, Stephen. He's the one who changed the complete picture of Christianity. He never knew Christ. 
he was epileptic and a very hot-tempered man. And even he fought with Matthews because he could not accept the Immaculate Conception of Christ. A person who is not even realized, who has led such a tyrannical life. Why did he come to, to Christianity? He came to Christianity because he thought it was a very good platform for him to jump onto. I face that in Sahaja Yoga also. There are people in Sahaja Yoga who come and they just sometimes think that such a big worldly affair they can handle, so they try to rule and they try to take to power. They do not even feel the vibrations, they don't even feel the all-pervading power, but they think it's a good platform to occupy. And this Mr. Paul was again born, was again born as Augustine. And he did even much worse for Christianity. My father who was a very learned man, I asked him, I said, who is this Paul and how is it there? So he told me, I don't understand, he's a stranger. And then I asked why Martin Luther of, of all the things did not describe the mother. He said it was true that Martin Luther was a realized soul and he wanted to deviate from Catholicism, but he thought at that time to talk about the mother would not appeal to many people who were Islamic. So to convert them to Christianity would be difficult. This was a little expediency, I think. They did not refer to the mother. So they called it a holy ghost. It's a funny thing to call, I tell you, really. And then to call it a dove. That's also I can't understand. A symbol. All the time you find a dove everywhere. But in so many paintings I have seen people putting their hands like this, who are the disciples of Christ, and I see the light coming out of their heads. We have photographs, very miraculous photographs, but of Sahaja Yogis, all of them are sitting like you, and on their head there is light. But all these things <coughs> took such a form, such an organization. Even a person like Khalil Gibran has talked in complete chapter about Paul, denouncing him completely. Nobody took heed of it. He was an organizer and a power-oriented gentleman wanted to have a big power and his place in the Bible. How does he come in the Bible? I mean, he has nothing to do with the Bible. And even in the churches they read what he has said, an epileptic fellow. You'll find out in Sahaja Yoga that epilepsy is caused by possession. And if the possession is removed, you can cure epilepsy. In Russia we have been able to cure epilepsy of so many people. Of course, medicine doesn't have this cure. I myself studied medicine and I know the limitations of medicine. It deals just with the outward symptoms of human beings. It's like a tree which is sick, so you try to look after the leaves and give medicines to the leaves, how can you cure the tree? You have to go to the roots and to go to the roots you have to become a subtler personality. If you can reach the roots, 
then the whole tree can be nourished. Now this is the knowledge of the roots, while what we see outside is the knowledge of the tree. If the tree grows much more in proportion to the root, then you know what can happen and that's what today we are afraid of, that we might be completely destroyed. We are on the brink of some sort of a horrible shock that's going to come to us. It seems there is a tremendous fear in the minds of people here. Apart from the simple nature of Americans, they are also very much frightened and whatever comes in their way, they grow. They try to get hold of it. This is another problem we are facing. There is nothing to be afraid of. This world is not going to be destroyed. The Creator who has created you is the father of all the fathers and kindest of all the kindest. He cannot allow His creation to be destroyed. So don't believe these money makers who are telling you that this world is going to be destroyed. That problem of war is over now, thanks to Gorbachev. The other ecological problems also can be solved if you people get your realization. Very, it's a very simple thing to solve the problem. But if you start getting at everything without thinking, without discrimination, then definitely, definitely America could be destroyed. And if there is any country that will be destroyed first, will be America, not from without, from within. That's why I'm so concerned, so concerned that you should take some heed, must pay some attention to this aspect, what is missing in us. Think of your children and think of the progeny and think of your country. Where are we going? And then you'll realize you have failed in one point that you have not turned to your roots, you not tried to find out what your roots are. It's useless to say that this country is only 200 year old. Country may be 200 year old, but you are not. You are, you are antiques, I would say. You were born so many times before in so many countries and you've been seekers. You are seekers and seekers in ages you have been growing in that seeking and today you are here to seek. But only thing what you have lost in this seeking is the discrimination. And that's why I say whatever one may say, even if I say something you need not believe. Please don't. Blind faith is not going to help you to get your realization. Neither you are denying it. You have to have an open mind as I told you, like a scientist, you must see this hypothesis, if it is there, if it works, then please, as honest people, you must accept it. There is no secret in Sahaja Yoga, no secret. My life is not a secret, nothing is a secret. Everybody knows what's happening in Sahaja Yoga. So, first of all, I have to tell you that you keep your minds open. When I have to tell you about this machinery that is within us created because of our evolution. And as you see there, there are seven centers which are placed in the central line and there are two lines on both the sides, left and right. Out of these, the first center is below the Kundalini, which is in the triangular bone, known as sacrum. Sacrum means sacred, and Greek, peop Greek 
uh, museum people told me that Greeks considered this bone as a sacred bone. So in this resides this power which we call as Kundalini in Sanskrit language. Now this Kundalini is coiled and a coil is called as Kundal, that's why it's called as Kundalini. Now it's a female, it's a power which is female and is the reflection of the primordial mother in you, in Sanskrit called as Adishat. Of course India knew about it thousands of years back, no doubt, no doubt. Fourteen thousand years back they say, I don't know if the English would accept that we were that old or not, but it is said so. People have written about it. This power rises. Six center it penetrates and the seventh one is at the base of it. Now the seventh one looks after your excretion or if you are doctors you'll understand it also looks after the pelvic plexus. So also the sex is looked after by this. So it is clear cut that in your ascent sex plays no part. That's why Christ has said that you have to be like small children to ascend. Actually when Kundalini rises your attention is no more on sex, all your excretionary functions stop completely. So now here Mr. Freud or later on you can say uh, Rasputin or then Rajneesh, all those who talked of sex being the power of Kundalini are absolutely wrong. And then how is it then Christ has said he, he corrected the Ten Commandments out of that he said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. Eyes, such a subtle point he said. Why he said that? In America now when I come here, I mean, I see everybody has eyes like this all the time, I mean they don't have steady eyes at all. They are Christians, followers of Christ. And sometimes surprises. In the beginning, you see, one gets a cultural shock to see, what is this, what are they looking at? What are they looking at? It's a joyless pursuit. Everyone knows, but the eyes have become like that because they have lost their innocence. But for your information, innocence is never lost, never lost. Only it gets conditioned or clouded, that's all. But it is never lost. I have seen now in my work that everyone, whether they were English or they were Greeks or they were Americans, anybody who gets their awakening gets a steady eye and an innocent eye. And these eyes could be so powerful that even attention of these eyes or even a glance of these eyes can transform can comfort, can redeem. And that's why Christ has said it, but actually the deity of innocence resides there at the seventh center. He incarnates as Christ at the sixth center here, between the optic chasma, which is giving energy to our eyes. The essence of Bible can only be understood if you are a realized soul and you can read between the lines. 
Though I must say that this Mr. Paul has tried to destroy a lot of it. Whatever he might have tried, there are so many truths still there in the Bible. And we can see them so clearly, we can feel them, we can understand them. I mean, for example, once you are a realized soul, a Hindu might say, because I was born in a Christian family, he would say, why did you take your birth in a Christian family? Do you believe in Christ? I said, of course. So, I'll just say, all right, you ask a question like this. Put your hand towards me and ask a question. Call me Mother. Mother, is, was Christ the Son of God? And he gets cool breeze on his hand. Tremendous cool breeze. And he's surprised. Then we have the first center, which is, I told you, is of sex. And sex has nothing to do with your ascent. Only the human beings can get their realization, not animals. They too have sex. But that does not mean that sex, there's something wrong. It's one of the functions of the body, is an important function, but it has nothing to do with divine work. As you go to bathroom, you have sex, that's all. So much accent of sex is given, I am surprised. Despite that, you have minus population. While in India we never talk of sex, I mean this word, sex I could not pronounce when I came to London first, because we don't say this word, it's regarded, it spoils your tongue. To say sex also with your tongue was something impure. But then I practiced a little bit. <laughs> but I was very bashful while saying that. So, this is... It is not necessary to put such an accent and to have a mental uh, thinking about it, because if you do it mentally too much, then you are definitely either you'll go to one extreme, become rapists and things like that, and on the other side you might become important. One of the two things will happen. I mean, in India we have seldom heard stories of rape and all that, seldom. And we never think of, uh, I mean, I'm telling not about the westernized Indians, but about villages, where an 80-year-old woman uh, grandmother writing love letters to an 18-year-old grandson. I mean, if you tell somebody, they'll tell, they'll think that I'm just befooling them. It's impossible. So whatever were natural barriers are finished by our so-called freedom, which is actually abandonment. But after Sahaja Yoga, I don't have to tell you anything. You just become righteous, you just become righteous. I don't have to tell you. Like people who came, take, took drugs came to Sahaja Yoga, and I must say, English are that way, something deep about them also. Overnight they gave up their drugs, overnight. I didn't tell them, I never told them. I never even talked about the drugs. Alcoholism, this one doctor who was such an alcoholic, he was out of job, he was on dole, and today he's running seven hospitals in London. Overnight, what has happened actually? That, supposing you're holding on to a snake, and it's darkness, and if I say, there's a snake in your hand, you'll say, no, it's not, it's a rope. How can you argue with the person till the snake bites? So you put on the light. In the light, you throw it away yourself, don't have to tell anything, don't have to argue. So the spirit is enlightened, your attention is enlightened with the light of the spirit and you see what's wrong, what's wrong with you, what are you holding on to and you just 
give it up. And you become so powerful to give up any habit. It's so easy, so easy for you to give up. Overnight I've seen people have given up all their bad habits, which are really destructive. These are all destructive habits. Whether you like it or not, but they are destructive. Let us face it. But you lose your willpower using those habits. As a result, you cannot give it up. It's a helpless condition. No use forcing, no use giving lecturing, no, no use making a martyrdom out of it, nothing. Just get yourself, get to yourself and your light of yourself will show you how powerful you are, how great you are, what is your glory, what is your identity. And then you are surprised because you are connected with that Divine Power and the power starts flowing through you. And you are surprised how your life is changed and how you have become a medium for God. Once as of course coming to America, I was coming by ship and our captain uh, told me that we are sending an SOS for a person who has got pneumonia. I said, I'll go and cure that person, but you see I was the wife of the owner so they, they wouldn't allow me to go down. I said, all right, you have got realization, you just go and touch that man, that's all. He went down and put his hand on in his lungs. I told him that ask him to stop his breathing thrice. His pneumonia was cured. He was so amazed, he came up, he said, how could I do it? I said, because it's flowing through you. Even supposing an ordinary man gets the kingdom and he's asked to sit on the throne, he looks this side, that side, whether I should sit or not. In the same way, though you achieve a position, such a high status, you are a little frightened to occupy and to accept that position. But I've seen people who have not realized souls, who do not know anything about divinity, their lives are full of falsehood, they are very bad character people, they become big gurus, shamelessly, they claim such big, big things, they have no fear of God, they have no fear of anything. So what? If I have to go tomorrow to jail, it doesn't matter, I'll have so much money with me. But a Sahaja Yogi is very humble, he keeps to himself, he's very contented and he doesn't change his outward dress or he doesn't put on some sort of a funny uh, dress, up. but he's normal just like as you are. He doesn't do anything abnormal. I think the Sahaja Yogis become the most normal people, but you'll be surprised, those who have seen them say that these are angels, these are not human beings, these are angels. So this transformation takes place as this Kundalini rises on, in our centers. So the first center, according to real where the Kundalini enters is the second one which you see as the yellow one. Now this is the center which is responsible for our creativity. I have seen many artists in India who are ex extremely anxious to play before me. And once they have played before me or twice, they become world's famous artists. So many of them will tell you about me. Now so they want to take my photograph and put it there to show to people that I am their guru. I said, nothing to you. I am not your guru, I have not taught you music. Only thing is, your Kundalini has risen. I have nothing to do with it. You had your technique with you. Only thing, because your Kundalini has risen, you have become so dynamic and you are expressing yourself without any fear, without any inhibition. Simple thing as that. But this center we use too much, especially in the West, when we think too much. And when we think too much, we use the energy of this center because this center is responsible for converting fat cells 
into grey cells for the use of the brain. So when you think too much, then it gets entangled or it gets busy with this only one function while it has to do many other functions. Like it has to look after your liver, it has to look after your pancreas, it has to look after your spleen, it has to look after your intestines and also your kidneys. So a person who thinks too much, plans too much, who is futuristic, such a person gets a bad liver. And when you get a bad liver, it means an overactive liver. The function of liver is to absorb the heat, which is a poison within us, and to release it to, into the bloodstream becomes impossible. So the heat starts rising. Your lungs collapse with the heat, you get asthma. It rises higher, you might get a massive heart attack. It goes lower down, then you get constipation. It can coagulate your kidneys, you get your kidney trouble, you cannot pass urine. Only one liver can bring all these problems to you. Now the second thing that is affected by overthinking is your pancreas, by which you get diabetes. Now in India, in the village if you go, even in Nepal, they take sugar as much that the spoon must stand at right angle. So much sugar they must take. They never get diabetes. Never. Never you. They, they don't know what diabetes. Because they work the whole day, in the night they sleep off. Again next day they get up, work the whole day. They don't think. Same with their wives, they, they also don't think. Because same way they work in the daytime and sleep in the night. But too much spare time when we have, we start thinking. They do not future plan so much. Whatever comes their way, they arrange it, organize it and live with it. So this diabetes is a special disease of the people who are planners, who are futuristic, and who think too much and who worry too much. And it's a vicious circle. Once you get diabetes, you worry too much. So you get more diabetes. Then comes the third disease, which is much more dangerous and very common in America. Comes from the spleen. Spleen also is to be looked after by the same center, which we call as Swadishta. Now, the spleen part in a, the role of spleen in our body is very important because it, it keeps our rhythm. It's, it's for the rhythm of the body, rhythm with the nature. Now, our life is so hectic. Now, it has to produce red blood corpuscles according to certain rhythm. But we have no rhythm. Any emergency that comes in, it has to produce red blood corpuscles. But since early in the morning we read the newspaper, this is the worst curse, I think, for spleen. So you get a shock, so many killed. I mean, they will never give a good news, never, out of question, because they have to give sensations to you, see, shocks. So they'll give horrible news by which your spleen will start pulsating, giving you more RBCs. Then you get into your car without taking your breakfast, a breakfast is in your hand, you are eating something, driving, because you are getting late, we are time-bound. On the way we find all the road jammed, then we get again upset, how are we to reach? Then we go to the office, we are slightly late, then the boss is shouting at you oh, and you are in a mess. All these things build up a tension as we call it, but it's nothing but ordinary unrhythmic, hectic life of our, that gives us. Actually the life should be such that you start your office at eleven o'clock, better is. <laughs> and you sit down with your wife, have your food in a rhythmic way. And in the daytime you must have siesta. If Americans have their siesta in the daytime, all their tensions will disappear. 
because in the daytime all the deities sleep, all the deities who are on these centers, they sleep. So if you can have a siesta, even for half an hour, I tell you, your tensions will disappear. On the contrary, the pressure mounts on with the work, this is to be done, that is to be done, rush. I mean, the Americans never used to speak so fast, I tell you. Nowadays you can't follow any news, you can't follow what they speak, I mean, it's impossible because the words go like telescope into even each other. And the whole life is so made that you feel that they are all under some sort of a earthquake shock or something. Everybody is running helter skelter, this, that. You go to a shop, you go, really, if you see, everybody is having a rat race on the road, anywhere. This is the curse of the modern times, but also the blessing of modern times is Sahaja Yoga. That's why there is, because all these problems have come up. That is why now we have this blessing of Sahaja Yoga also. So what happens that when this poor spleen becomes unrhythmic and crazy, then any shock from the left side can manifest a very serious disease called as blood cancer. Now this blood cancer has been definitely cured by your Kundalini, awakening. I don't cure because if I say that, oh, the government will arrest me. So I would say your Kundalini cures this blood cancer. And there are many who have been cured of blood cancer. Then the third problem is of high blood pressure, comes from the kidney. The kidney also coagulates. To begin with, it is in such a small dimension that you don't feel it, but because of that the pressure rises. Then it stops functioning because it coagulates. This also is absolutely curable through the awakening of your Kundalini. Then the last is the constipation. I mean, I've seen in Switzerland, people eat something that we give it to buffaloes in India. I mean, we cannot think of eating that. I was shocked, I said, how can you eat these cotton seeds? He said, that's very good for roughage. But I said, what this roughage? Tomorrow you'll start eating wood or what? Why do you need so much roughage? because of this problem. So nothing seems to be normal for people who think too much. And the another side is where they don't think at all, absolutely lethargic organs also. So there are two types of human beings, one on the right side, one on the left side. Those who are sitting and crying and weeping about their past, I had a very nice time and now it's horrid, I had very good parents and now, now a horrid husband, sort of thing goes on and on and on. At that time they become left-sided. So we have two types of people, one who are thinking of the future and those who are thinking of the past. Both the sides are nourished or looked after by what we call the left and right sympathetic nervous system. The left looks after the left side and the right looks after the right side. But if we somehow or other get into the center, then we do not suffer from any one of these troubles. Our attention is, say, like this sari, I'll show you. Like this it moves up and it pulls all our attention in the center through the Kundalini till it pierces through the seventh set. And then we are in the center. Once we come in the center, we are absolutely there where we are in moderation. We know how far to go with everything and we lead a very peaceful, nice life. We accept the life with great joy as it is. We don't hanker. We have no greed left, there's no lust left, but we enjoy the sex life we have in a sane way. We enjoy all the material things on the 
in the best way possible. For example, now see, this is a carpet lying down here. When I wash this, it's so beautiful. But when I wash this and start thinking about it, now how much it must have cost? Of course, if it belongs to me, then it's a headache because already I will start seeing if there are any spots, whether it is insured or not. <laughs> and if somebody has spoiled it. But supposing it doesn't belong to me, thank God, if that's so. Then also I'll think how much it must have cost, I might feel jealous, oh, I should have one like this, I don't have, from what shop she, the lady must have bought it, I must go there and get it. All these thoughts will be coming into my head, not the beauty of the carpet. But when this Kundalini rises and crosses over this center of Christ, then your thoughts become quiet. You become a personality which we call as in the status of thoughtless awareness, where you are aware but no thought. Because we think of the future and we think of the past, but we cannot be in the present. But in thoughtless awareness we are in present, there's no thought. And then the whole thing, that is, the beauty that was created by the Creator, the joy that was put into it starts pouring onto you and you start enjoying, just enjoying, not thinking about it, just seeing, not seeing anything, no reaction, just watching and the whole of it just pours down. So this is the state when it comes to your thinking becomes limited and then your Swadhisthana chakra gets settled down. It gets also nourished by Kundalini and that is how most of your problems are solved because every center when it goes out of order, it creates the so-called human problems. But Kundalini rising means it integrates all of them. Once you are a realized soul, your mind won't argue with your heart, with your liver, your brain, but in a very integrated manner you'll enjoy everything. You become a witness to a drama. Like there's a drama going on, you watch the drama and you are involved into it. But once the drama is over, well, then you say, oh, I'm here, I'm just a spectator, I'm not in the drama. In the same way, the whole thing becomes like a drama and you are away from it. Your problems are like waves, they rise and fall. But once you are in the boat, you can see them clearly and you can solve them. But in case you know how to swim, you can jump in and save others from drowning. This is the third stage where you have to rise. In that stage we call it as the doubtless awareness, is called as Nirvikalpa Samadhi. They talk of yoga, this thing, hat yoga and all that. What is hat yoga? Ashtangas, there are eightfold things out of which this exercises is just a wee, 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 wee bit and that too is to be applied only when the Kundalini rises, when there is a problem. But here the way we take this Hatha Yoga is something like a medicine box. The whole of that, without paying any attention to our spirit, is for the spiritual growth, not for physical. Because if you see the book of Patanjali, which is so big as that, there he has discussed only what I'm telling you today and not these things that you stand on your head or you walk like this or you jog like that. These things come up as a craze and we are very vulnerable to all these things. But if you just look back, you will see this is all entrepreneur's stuff. They are just trying to befool us. Not only the gurus but also the entrepreneurs. They are trying to befool us. They tell us now, you must jog because then you must have jogging suits, you must have jogging shoes, you must have jogging this and jogging that and you pay for it. All the time they are suggesting, this is the fashion now, start a fashion with the tight pants now, then they develop very close veins, now so loose pants. It's just a way of befooling simple, good people, taking advantage of them. And we 
are slaves. But all these things finish off once you get your realization, you understand these things very well and you know these crooks and you don't play into their hands. There's no need, there's no need to go on wasting your energy in changing your form, dresses, changing everything morning till evening and making a heap of plastic which cannot be burnt, which cannot be done. You become really sensible, wise, righteous, beautiful, dynamic, compassionate people, in the real sense of the word. And your priorities become so sensible that you are amazed at yourself, how have I become like this? Then we have artists, uh, we have uh, painters, we have, we have all kinds of people in Sahaja Yoga who have really prospered in their own uh, profession, doctors have prospered in their own profession, but they are extremely humble, compassionate, sensible and they are spirit-oriented, not money-oriented. And then the money flows, you don't have to worry about money. Once you are spirit-oriented, money is at your feet. Knowledge is at your feet, everything at your feet. Because you are blessed, we have lost the faith in the blessings of God because we are away from Him. But in His kingdom, you'll be surprised how it works. It's miraculous. It's miraculous. Every small little need is looked after. And at every small point you see the hand of the Divine trying to help you. That you see yourself. I told them that you better write about the miracles of Sahaja Yoga. When they wrote it, it's so big as that, a pile. I said, forget it. How are we going to publish this? And that is what just going to happen, that's what you deserve. After all, you are human beings. Those people who tell you you are sinners and all that, please know that they must be the greatest sinners ever born. Don't believe all that. You are human beings, after all. Only human beings can make mistakes. You are not gods. So if you have made some mistakes, why do they want you to feel guilty? If you feel guilty, you spoil this center here and you get horrible problems of angina or you might get also spondylitis, so many troubles with this guilt is there. So please remember that you are a human being and you have every right to be united with that Divine Power and that is what Sir Yoga is. Sir means with, Ja is born with you, is the right to this yoga means the union with the Divine. Yoga doesn't mean standing on your heads, it doesn't mean anything. If any person who talks of yoga and doesn't give you realization, don't go near that person. Yesterday I told you, first thing, nobody can take money from you. Of course for this all they have paid, the Sajogis have paid, I must say. But we were just now thinking that last four years, they have started paying, otherwise I used to pay, my husband used to pay for everything. But then they said, you should not pay for our salvation, Mother, that's too much. Now they have started paying for it. But not for your realization, not to me, but to this all, all right, doesn't matter. And everything, the accounts and everything should be clear-cut. You should see where your money goes, what it happens, what it works out. who is handling the money. Then you have to see if they give you realization or not. Realization means you must feel the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. Realization means that you should have powers to raise the Kundalini of others. Realization means that you should feel the actualization of the baptism, the cool breeze coming out of your head. Not any priest putting water on your head and saying that you are now a Christian.
Unless and until these things happen to you, don't accept anyone, even me. This is what one has to understand. You have to become something and the time is there, it's being announced. This time has to come and the time has come and where are the people? That I should find those people in Russia, I was really surprised who never had heard about God, had never heard about anything about spirit, they were not supposed to talk about it and there you have thousands. How is it? Thousands. This hall, <laughs> we had a hall at least ten times bigger than this, was all completely full and the same amount of people were sitting outside. They had never known me, they had never know, seen my face, nothing, only with the photographs, they were so sensitive, also Italians, I must say. Italians have that sensibility and Greeks. Why not the Americans? You must research it out. You have such a capacity to do research, for everything you do research, for your car you do research, for your sofa set you do research, for even shoes they said they have researched it and made it comfortable. <laughs> then why not research and find out? At least have that scientific attitude and try to solve the problems that you have. You all can do it, I know it's, you are very capable to do it. Those who become Sahajogis, Americans, are great people. But first of all, it's impossible to make them stick to one thing. As they change their cars, change their houses, change their motor cars, they go on changing also their gurus, you see, it's like a guru shopping going on. <laughs> Actually, you see, I also belong to another kind of a society, so-called elite society and I just keep quiet, I never say a word there because I'm absolutely useless. And what they talk like this, oh, have you been to this guru recently? You know, there's a lady, she comes with a van and she has those uh, laser beans and things like that. She's very expensive but very good, very expensive. But she can give you a little bargain, if you bargain with her, she might. Or somebody is for sale. Can you imagine? God does not throw money, does He? We sold Christ. Did we pay anything to Christ? At least the Christians should not pay. Now, of course, Hindus never paid anything to Rama or Krishna, nothing. Of course, that's just there. But this one test you must put and then the second one that you have to get something yourself. You must get something and that is your Self-realization, not craziness that on the streets and Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. What is this? Anybody can do it. In India everybody does that. Wearing such dresses, what is so difficult? Also in the supermarket you get that thing just to put it on your head. It's ridiculous. If you ask any sensible man in India to do that, he said, am I mad? Why will I do it? Also cut your hair this way or to wear some nonsensical dress. What is so great about it? What is so great? Anybody can do it. Or some people start jumping and uh, all saying all kinds of things and they said that now we have got the uh, language, we are speaking some other language, mad people. I mean, if you are near God, you have to become a much more sensible, wise, sane people, isn't it? You have seen the saints, you have seen Zen people, you have seen all of them, how sensible they were, were they mad? All kinds of craziness, is associated with God. I can't understand that. Now be wise and discriminating and try to understand. It is through you people only it's going to work out. 
I had asked you to ask me some questions. You know, in this one or two days, I I'm sorry, I can't tell you everything about Sajjana. But they will give you books and everything, you can read them, you'll understand about everything about chakras, they are quite experts, they'll all tell you about it. Now say there are so many lights here, when you come in, uh, I'll have to just say, all right, put on that switch and all of them will come up. But if I have to tell you all the history and everything about electricity and then where it is stored and how it has come, you'll be bored stiff. Best thing is to have the light first and then we'll talk about it. So if you are hungry, I've done the cooking, I would say, better have it. And then we'll discuss it and talk about it and there are thousands and thousands of my lectures which you can listen to and you can know a lot, you can become all experts, you can all become big gurus, no doubt about it. <laughs> You'll become your own gurus, I promise you will become your own gurus because you are meant to be that. You don't need any guru, your spirit is your guru and that will guide you. It's like uh, uh, if you take a, say a television from America and show it to the Indians in a village and say that in this box you can see uh, the films coming from all over the world, they'll say, what, telling lies? How can this box give us this? But you put to the means. In the same way you are put to the means and then you'll see how fantastic you are. All your fears, all your problems will just dissolve. But you must penetrate into it, deeper and deeper. Like we had three, four people whom I gave realization and next day they went and did all kinds of nonsensical things and now they have got AIDS. What can I do? Four, five years back I gave them realization nicely, they never settled down. They went to some other gurus and some places and all that and they got AIDS now, they are now suffering from AIDS. Of course they can be cured, but not in America, how can I cure them? I'll be again arrested. This is the problem. So you have to get into it deeply and to understand it and to become masters. You don't have to pay for it again and again, I'm saying. It's the only thing you have to give some time. And we have so much time otherwise. These watches are with us because we should save time. We save time for wasting. <laughs> we have to save time for our ascent. Not much. Five minutes in the morning, ten minutes in the evening is sufficient. And every week, once in a way, once a week you have to come to the center. Then you will not give up. After some time, the greatest punishment for Sajogi is that you have to go out of Sahaja Yoga is the greatest punishment. There's no compulsion in Sahaja Yoga. If you want to go away, you can go away. But sometimes you have to ask them to get out. Some of them have to get out and they feel very sad about it. But then they correct themselves, purify themselves, again come back. But the movement in America is the least, much less than even South America, much, much less. So I have to request you now in San Diego, last time also, first time I came to San Diego. So again I request you all that you, because you belong to the city of gods, so you have to take up the responsibility and work it out here. So may God bless you. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I would like to have some questions and if they are written down is better. Yes, please, give it to him. And after this, we'll have the session of realization which will take only ten minutes. I also still have some leftover from last night, and I'll read with you up. We only have about halfway through notes. Uh, 
the gentleman last night asked her one of the when did you realize your mission? Where and under what masters did you gain your insight? Or was it always there? Always there. I was born with it. This person says they've been practicing and exploring many different ways to reach enlightenment and spending a lot of money, but nothing seems to work. What is the difference between Sahaja Yoga and these other practices? They've tried TM and Hatha Yoga, amongst other things. TM is the worst. <laughs> worst of all. See, in TM, I must tell you, I didn't know what they were doing in TM, but the head of their flying uh, foundation in Scotland, in Ronach. This fellow was Peter Pierce and his wife, she is the granddaughter, is one duke, her name is Linda. And <clears throat> somebody came to tell me about them, that they are suffering from epilepsy and they are in a very bad shape. So I said, all right, I would like to see them. I didn't know they were doing TM or anything, so they came to me and I asked them, who is your guru? So they said, we were doing TM and I'm teaching TM, I was. And he told me such horrible things about it. He's writing a book now about it, that first of all, he told me there are three mantras they used to give and we were told not to tell anybody, see? And these mantras were so funny that you tell, if you had told it to any Indian, he would have really laughed because they were not even Sanskrit. The first one was Inga. Inga means the bite of a scorpion, not in Sanskrit language. Then the second one is a pinga, and a pinga means when a person uh, gets possessed and goes round and round is a pinga. And the third one is a tinga. <laughs> Which one is that when you show like this to somebody, the thumb, you know what you say? Tinga, to show like this. <laughs> and everybody was asked to pay three hundred pounds for this so-called mantra. And this fellow, the guru, used to sit on the uh, seventh heaven somewhere and the person had to come through six, seven rooms and enter the great guru, which was only four, or five, four feet five inches with the squinty eyes sitting there. And the guru would tell this mantra in the ears, taking three hundred pounds at the first door. Then there was another six thousand pounds. They said, Nothing works out, we are going mad with it. So, all right, no, no, no. So, the second course. The second course they started, he told me, was uh, to go to Siddha course or something like that. In that, they had to go to Switzerland, pay 6,000 pounds each, and in a big hall like this, they were all supposed to sit down and jump on cushions and jump on some sort of a foam. And uh, they were given. Uh, for six days, the water that boiled some potatoes, six days. And the seventh day they were given the rind to eat. And the eighth day they gave them to eat the potatoes because they were supposed to become uh, very light. And they all broke their bottoms because they had to jump very high on that. But for what? Because he said, then you can fly in the air. But I said, why do you want to fly like this? Already we have problems of, uh, you see, <laughs> cars and things, and if you start flying with them, what will happen? What is the need? You can fly by aeroplane, why do you want to fly like this? Such funny ideas. But then I found they had become recluses, all these people had become recluses and had become epileptic. Then I called him, his wife, 
and his deputy director. Thank God my husband had gone out on some work for about a month, so they stayed in my house, I cured them. But he became completely bankrupt. His wife was completely ruined, they got cured, no doubt. Then he went to South Africa, now he's there, he's writing this book. And when they wanted to fight the case, the TM managed, because it was in Scotland, managed the magistrates, because they have lots of money. Here also I feel they have told the uh, newspapers not to publish uh, anything about us. Everywhere I go, they are there just to stop my work, because, you see, after all, it's their earnings are killed by that. But the last thing now they have started is Ayurveda. The Ayurveda, you don't need TM for that, anybody can do Ayurveda. What is the need? What is the need to have an agency of these people? It's a fact and they know that I know all their secrets, so they are very much against me, doesn't matter, all of them are against me naturally, but they are not against each other. Like Christ has said that the house of Satan will not speak against itself. So this is TM. I'm sorry that you've been to TM. Of course, despite that, now we know how to manage even TM. All, most of it we can manage. What else? He's been to Rajneesh also. I didn't say that you to but one thing is definite, that you are all seekers. Otherwise you would not go to these people. So is my, is my duty that you should get your Realization. I'm duty-bound. It's my privilege because you are seekers. I have to give you Realization. Whatever you might have done, forget it and forgive them. What else? Sri Mataji, this person says we see AIDS and other incurable diseases manifesting everywhere. How do these come about and how does Sahaja Yoga address such problems? I must say, AIDS patients have been cured with such. I must say. It's a fact, no doubt. But what we can do in this country, I don't know. I have no idea because I don't want to get arrested. But in England, alternate uh, medicines are allowed. And if people could reach England, we might be able to help them. This person asks, how does one overcome a lifetime of bad habits and how can you be renewed on a daily basis in our seeking? I've already told you that when the light comes in, you just become so powerful, so confident of yourself that all bad habits drop out. Of course, just after realization, say you get your realization, that doesn't mean you become a great saint. You have to fix yourself properly. In American language, you have to fix your yoga. Unless and until that is done, still you are vulnerable, so you must fix it up. This person says, creative energy is a great power. How can we utilize it or channel energy? Yeah. Creative energy. Was it? Creative energy. Yeah. How can we use this power? How can we channel it? You get the state, you become that. I told you the Swadhisthana. The Swadhisthana gets nourished and you don't know from where you get your ideas. Now here it is an architect, he should tell his own experience what he's doing now and what he was doing before. The ideas start pouring into you because they come from the Swadhisthana Chakra and the Swadhisthana Chakra gets nourishment. This person asks, how can this process be used to address the problems of the homeless, of racial prejudice, joblessness, and hopeless problems, Hopeless. Yes. <laughs> you see, racialism comes from ignorance, complete ignorance. We do not know that God has created all of us just the same. We smile the same way, laugh the same way, cry the same way. Nobody tells us that the Americans should laugh like this and the Indians should laugh like that. We yawn the same way. 
we sleep the same way, wake up the same way. Now we are differently made, God has made us to create beauty. You see, if there is vaichitra, as they say in Sanskrit, if there is variety, then there is beauty. So variety is created. God created only one world, He didn't know that we'll make so many out of it. We have done it. But once this ignorance goes away, because spirit is a universal being, then you become a universal being. Like the, uh, yesterday only I told you that when I went to Russia, twenty-five Germans rushed to Russia to give Realization to Russians. And the way they embraced and the way they loved them, I really tell you, I felt so happy and tears started rolling my eyes. Such joy! Imagine the Russians! And we have, Rus uh, we have these uh, Germans who are so gentle, they are the gentlest people, you won't call them Germans anymore. That's what happens, because basically you are that and you become a universal being and you follow the religion which is innate within you, which makes you an universal being. You don't become any Christian, Hindu, Muslim, nothing. You are a human being and you become a universal human being and you respect all of them, not one. What is the next problem he has? Joblessness. The joblessness also, we, I must tell you that in London it's so many jobless people there. But it's difficult to find a Sahaja Yogi who is a jobless there, difficult. They just get jobs. And because they are doing the job of God also. Ah. The other was hopeless. Hopeless. But it's not, it's very hopeful. This person asks Sri Maharaj, if one has the potential to make a lot of money, would you still recommend that one give up material wealth to get to reality? Or is it better to make the money and give it to charity, to thus helping people? See, if you are making lots of money or whether making no money whatsoever, in Sahaja Yoga you make money, all right, but there you do not cling to it, you do not hanker after it. Now there was a lady here in San Francisco, she was running a store and when she got Realization she said that, I used to meticulously remember this is I have got, that I have got, this is bought, this is sold and all those things. I have forgotten all that. But now I am making a big profit. I said, then it's all right. Money also is one of the blessings of God. And Sri Krishna said, yoga kshema vahamyam. Kshema means benevolence in every way. So once you get your yoga, then you get that, not before. Yoga kshema, first yoga and then the kshema. Kshema is the benevolence. So all kinds of benevolence come, but your mad race about money finishes off. But you get money, all right, and the complete satisfaction out of it. The second part of this question you just answered, but the first part is, how are you and Sahaja Yoga supported if no one is accepted for the practice? Supported? Yes. In what way? Means if no money is taken. How Financially? Yes. I mean, I told you now that in the beginning, of course, I used to pay for everything, no doubt. Even now, in so many places, for Russia I have to pay myself for the time being. It's all right, my husband is very generous and he is an Indian, so he thinks he's doing some God's work, you see, by that and he'll get some good blessings, so he's a sensible man <laughs> He doesn't mind. If I empty his bank, he doesn't mind. Uh, and also now, you see, all these things like hall and all that, these people re get it and everything is arranged by them nowadays. Uh, but as I told you that for realization you cannot pay, you cannot pay me, you cannot purchase me, you cannot. And you cannot purchase your self-realization, your ascent. Well, it's not much, you see, for this all, 
uh, how much you need, don't need much money, that's all. Either you will pay thousands and thousands of rupees and pounds without asking. And if somebody has to pay even for the hall, they will say, how do you get this money? I mean, of course for the hall you have to pay, you don't expect me to pay for it. But I did, I'm saying I did pay. But now they feel ashamed that I should pay for the hall, they pay it. Because they are also concerned and you will also pay, I'm sure. You would not like me to pay for these halls as well as uh, for everything, uh, for your food or for everything. Do you expect me to do that? Not at all. So for your salvation we need not pay, but for your hall you have to pay, there's no harm. But I don't keep accounts, I don't know how they pay it, what they are, I have no idea, I never, I don't understand accounts at all. So they do it everything and they have to explain to you, I have nothing to do with them. It's a fact, I'm telling them if it is wrong they should, they should tell me. Shri this person asks, how is Self-realization and God-realization different? It's again a futuristic question. <laughs> First let us have the Self, as Buddha has said and also as Mahavira has said, because they thought if you talk of God-realization, people start just thinking they are God. But the difference between the two things is one, that first you get your Self-realization established, means you understand your powers as Self. Then you try to understand God, and God-realization is a situation in which you control so many things, automatically, automatically you control, you don't have to bother, it's just controlled and you are amazed how even the elements are controlled through your presence. But the first is to know yourself, establish yourself, know it well, master it, and then think of another thing. A second question is, what are the vibrations really and how do I read them precisely and without deception? All right. First, as again I say, first your Self-realization must be established and your, your Kundalini must be fixed properly. And then, you can sit here, there are seats, come along and then you start feeling the vibrations on your fingertips, first of all. That you'll feel now even. Then they have marked them to show the centers. See, one, two, three, four, five on your fingertips. So you will know which is the center that is catching. If you know how to correct the center, then you can correct your center. In the same way you can feel the centers of others. Once you start feeling them properly, you have to just know how to correct the centers, finish, then you are all right. And it hardly takes one month, hardly takes one month. Sri Mataji, the next five questions are all about different gurus. Uh, <laughs> do you want to, all about different ones? Which ones? Uh, one is about Swami Rama, who we believe in his teachings. What is the use of teachings? You have had many. You have had Christ, He has given you the Bible. There's so many we have had. Now no more teachings, actualization, ask for actualization. Ah, what else? Paramahansa Yogananda and his teachings about Kriya Yoga, which he says is the quickest technique for self-realization. I said? No, Yogananda. Ah, he might have said it but nobody has got it so far. Now what is Kriya Yoga? Sahaj Yoga is a Kriya. Kriya means, what you call Kriya in English? Action. Action. Uh, kriya is action and Sahaj Yoga a Kriya, no action. Now Kriya Yoga is like this. Yesterday I explained to some people who asked me that when your card starts, I mean when it is ignited, then automatically all the machinery starts working automatically, you don't have to move anything, it's all built in. But Kriya Yoga is this, that you don't start the car, 
don't start the Kundalini, but you start moving the wheels. First time when I came I was very shocked, now they have stopped all that nonsense because I think there was some sort of a stricture on that. They used to cut the tongue, uh, uh, this thread of the tongue and I saw some Indian doctors with their tongues wagging like that. I said, what has happened? They couldn't speak. So they told me that we have cut our uh, threads because we have to push back our tongue uh, and get to the khechari condition. Now khechari is a simple thing which is described, of course is a part of Sahaja Yoga only, that when the Kundalini rises, the centers, first of all allow the Kundalini to rouse, rise and then they augment, then again they relax, the higher ones, and then they augment because they have to stop the Kundalini from falling down. It's a simple thing like that. In the same way, when it reaches Vishuddhi Chakra, here also, what happens when Kundalini rises higher? There is a big augmentation that takes place and the tongue is pulled inside, which you don't feel normally, you won't feel because it's, Kundalini rises like a jet these days. So, what they did was to cut the tongue and put it there. But the Kundalini is sitting in the sacrum bone only. What's the use? So the whole Kriya Yoga is like moving your wheels while the car has not started. It's very easy to talk of these things because in India these books are available, you can read them. I know of people, uh, there was an actress who came to my program when I came in 71, there's so many people who came to my program and uh, also Dr. Chaudhary told me that you better get it uh, copyright I said, there's no copyright needed for this kind of a thing, it's all right. And they are using my words, they're using the word Kundalini, they are using Maha Yoga, they are using the words uh, like self life everything. I'm doing nothing about it, just making money. So what can I do about it? It is for you to decide. It is the actualization which you should ask. And this is what is this Kriya Yoga. I don't know why people are so impressed by his book. What has he written there? He went to Himalayas, he met one guru, so what? Anybody can do that. What is so great? What has he written? Why should it impress people? What has he done? Nothing. They have of course got a big place where they live and all that, that's all. But I don't think anybody has got realization from them. They cannot. First the Kundalini has to be awakened. Shri Mataji, this person asks, what is your relation to Babaji? Who is this? Nothing. I am absolutely against him, that's all. He's another hoax. These are all hoax, believe me, they are all hoax. Raman Maharshi was the real ISO, no doubt. Shirdi Sainath was realized so. Those who were realized, I'll say yes. Those who are not, I'll definitely see they are not. I have to say that. These Babaji's... <laughs> I have so many experiences of these funny people. <laughs> it's a long story. This Lahiri Baba, Laidi, Laidi Baba, the guru of this Yogananda, his, his grandson, he came to me and he said that I joined this Kriya Yoga, I did all kinds of things, I never got any realization or anything. So I was so fed up, then I went to this Krishnamurti, uh, I was with him, but then I started speaking like Krishnamurti, just like his voice and everything, I started speaking, doing all the drama of Krishnamurti and everything. And then I got a fright, one day I saw myself in the mirror, I said, Oh God, I'm becoming Krishnamurti and I'm just giving lectures, that's all. So Mother, I've come to you, know, please now give me realization. You'll be surprised, till today I've not been able to do that. This one person I've not been able to do. I don't know what all he has done. I told him, what all you have done, you tell me. Then he was telling me so many things about this Lahiri Baba and his Babaji. I said, Babri, all these things they do to you? Horrible. 
so much they have harmed him, this man. He's the grandson of Lahiri Baba. Shri this person asks, what do you think of Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Guru Gobind Singh? Guru Nanak, of course. I mean, Guru Nanak was the incarnation of the primordial master, no doubt about it, no doubt. He talked of unity. He was the incarnation of the primordial master who has incarnated many, many a times as Moses, as Abraham and also as he has been Muhammad Sahib and then Guru Nanak, no doubt about it. This person asks, is it possible that the Russians are open to self-realization because of the influence of the Maitreya there? Of the? Maitreya. Maitreya. I don't know about they know about Maitreya or not. It's all a Buddhist idea of Maitreya. But how will you recognize the Maitreya also? How will you recognize the Holy Ghost? If you are still waiting for Maitreya, then I think you are slightly mistaken. This person asks, can a person achieve out-of-body experience through Sadhu Yoga? What experience? Out-of-body. No, not at all, that's horrible. Why do you want to go out of your body? <laughs> Going out of body is achieved through position. You know, there are children killed in the beds. You, have you heard of such a thing here? I don't know, but in Switzerland. Children are sleeping in their beds because uh, parents don't keep the children with them. And the children are, uh, they die. That is what is happening because of this body business. The spirits, they come out and if they go out of the body, then these spirits can take away another spirit also and never return them. It's the worst thing is to become possessed like this. I had uh, three uh, American journalists, long time back they came to see me and they told me that uh, uh, Mother, we want to have a special capacity to know what is happening everywhere and uh, without being there, how can we do it? I said, who told you that I can do that? So they told me a name of a journalist, another one. I said, he told you this? I was the one who cured him of this disease. And he told you these things that I will make you like that? That fellow would disappear from his body and would go somewhere else and hear something else and we used to publish in the newspaper which would, was true. But his wife was so shocked by that she brought him and he said, Mother, please make me one person. I don't want to have this nonsensical thing. She said, one day he'll be dead. I said, he will be, one day he'll be lost. And these three people wanted to be like him, whom I cured to get this disease. It's a horrible state, one should never, never think of that. Why do you want to run away from the present? Present is the most beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful thing. Present is the reality. The past is finished and future doesn't exist. But if you can be in the present, nothing like it. Sri Mataji, this person asks about vegetarianism. Huh? What about vegetarianism? Oh. There are no isms in Sahaja, no isms at all. See, in the Bible is written, all beasts are created for you, for your use. And smaller animals than you, those people who need protein should eat. Now, for example, in Greenland, people cannot have any vegetables at all, so are they sinners? <laughs> but I would say Americans should take more vegetarianism is good because they've eaten too much of meats, so give a balance. But there is no hard and fast rule about it except that you should not eat any animal which is bigger than you because they have a bigger muscular uh, uh, cells and those cells can harm your teeth, can harm your intestines. But smaller animals are to be 
if it is needed, must be eaten. If it is not, for Indians must eat meat, otherwise already they are such useless people, uh, they are good for nothing. They can't even hold a gun, leave alone a revolver. If two Russia, uh, if few people go there with a one, one revolver, the whole village will jump into the well, such cowards. So for them it is necessary to eat meat, but they are vegetarians. But no, not in India, everybody is not now, it's better. But uh, what I'm saying, it is a very logical thing and is to be understood what sort of a person you are. If you are a left-sided person, then you must take proteins. But if you are a right-sided person, then you must take to vegetables and to carbohydrates. It's a question of protein, carbohydrates and fats. It's not a question of uh, animals. And, do you mean to say, by saving chickens I can give them realization? <laughs> and this nonsense of vegetarianism has gone so far so far now, eh, among Jainis, I don't know if you know, there are many here because they are money makers. Jainis, these Jainis have started a funny type of vegetarianism, I think, long time back. First of all, there was one Neminath, who was one of their Tirthankaras, who was a cousin of uh, Sri Krishna, who saw many dead things were uh, dead things in his marriage. So he felt that. I mean, you felt, sometimes you do feel that so many animals are dead and all that, we call it uparati. So he started vegetarianism. But now the giants do not allow any insects to die, even the bugs, the mosquitoes, viruses, anything should not be dead. But they'll kill human beings all right, not animals. <laughs> so ridiculous it is. Shri Maharaji, this person says that they have skin cancer and wants to know how they can be cured. Huh? This person has skin cancer and they want to know how they can get rid of it. Cancer. Skin cancer. Yes, it is. It comes from liver. If your liver is cured, you can be very easily. We have a liver diet which you have to take, you have to get your liver cured, which can be easily cured, work it out, have faith. You see, because you don't have to pay, that's why people don't do it. I've seen it, they don't do it seriously. It's like this, if you pay for something, then you get bound, that's mentality. Like yesterday as I was telling you that if you have paid for a play and the play made the worst possible, but you think we have paid for it, so go through it. But you don't have to pay in Sahaja Yoga, so people don't take it seriously. Kastamas have been cured, Livers have been cured, cancers have been cured, the skin cancer is no problem at all. But whatever they tell you, you have to listen to them and work it out. Within one month we'll find everything will be cured. There has to be commitment about it. You must be committed to yourself that I'm going to get all right. You decide on that point and it will work out. I'm going to be a yogi, you will be. But there should be some commitment Sri Mataji, the last question is, how do we know if we are in our spirit? We are? In our, in our spirit and are following our inner guidance. I didn't follow, just leave it. It's rather confusing. Yeah. It says, how do we know if we are in our spirit uh, and following our inner guidance? Okay, right now, all right. Now his question is, how are we to know that we are the Spirit, now we become the Spirit? First of all, when we become the Spirit, we start feeling the cool breeze all around us, first thing. Secondly, then we start feeling our centers on our fingertips. Like supposing I get American money and I have never known what American money is, supposing, then I have to go to the market to find out what it means, in the same way. You start using your hands, as I told you, the captain of the ship, and you will feel the vibrations of another person. You ask that person, now supposing you feel here some heat or some sort of burning, 
You ask him, is something wrong with your throat? How do you know? He'll say. You can feel the cancer, you can feel everything on your fingertips, you can diagnose. So you have to use your hands, that's how you will know. But then you start curing yourself and you start getting feeling better. Then when you become the master of this art, you start curing others, not only physically, mentally, emotionally, every way, you feel such a balance, such joy and such peace within yourself. It's not talking about peace because I know, because I've been with such people who have foundation of peace and some people have got Nobel Prize in peace and so hot-tempered that you can't sit near them for five minutes, they emit horrible heat like a heater. I really tell you, horrible and they have got Nobel Prizes in peace. I mean, I don't know how people have given them for peace, at least they could have given them for violence, but not for peace. But there is. So you really feel peaceful within yourself. Now you won't believe, I'm sixty-seven years of age and if you see my itinerary you will fa faint the way I travel. All the year round I'm practically traveling, I'm at peace with myself. They said, how do you manage? I said, why? I am there, when I'm traveling I know I am there. So what is there to be a, uh, thinking about? Just I'm there, that's all. So, but you think you are traveling? I said, I don't think that way, I'm just sitting there, I'm not traveling. Is the aeroplane that's traveling? And that's how, you just, you are at peace with yourself, you are at peace with everybody else. And, I mean, it's another personality that evolves out of you. So that's how you know you are that. I mean, first of all, people don't even believe that the cool breeze is coming uh, to your fingertips, is really, they, they think there must be the window, there must be an air conditioner, some people go home, close all the doors and start seeing. It's true, but then they realize. So you have to spend it and experiment with it and then you definitely start believing in it, that you are the Spirit and then you understand your powers. All right? You can raise the kundalini of a person, you can, and you will be amazed that how you can do it. In the beginning of Sahaja Yoga, we had about twelve people and they would not put their hands. They said, no, how can we, we don't have anything, I'm very, I mean, diffident about it. So one day there was a lecture arranged in a place where I had to go, in Nasik, when I had to go by car and luckily the car failed. And in India if your car fails, you are stranded, there's nothing else that you can do. And these people thought that one hour has passed, mother has not come and all these people are now going to beat us. So they started giving them realization. They were amazed they had the power. They had the power and that's how they discovered. So you have to be bold about it. You are that, I assure you. Only thing you must Claim what you are. I think we've finished with the things, now let's have our realization that will take about ten minutes and it will be a good idea to know yourself. If you want to be out for about five, ter five minutes, you can go out, then we can start it. If you think that we can give five minutes to you, just to move out a little bit. And then come back.
Let her be here. She, she, let her be here, I'll try to help her. Yes, let her come. Before we start at the outset, I would like to tell you that there are two conditions we have to fulfill. The first condition is you are not to feel guilty at all, at all. That means you have to completely forget the past and forgive yourself. These are only mental conceptions. Why do you judge yourself? Your Kundalini will judge you, so please just say that I am not guilty at all. Don't try to remember each and everything that has made you feel guilty, but just in general. I am not guilty at all. I have not done anything wrong whatsoever. I am a human being and I have a right to become a yogi. I have every right. <laughs> and the second one is that you have to forgive everyone in general again. Some will say it is difficult to forgive, but whether you forgive or you don't forgive, what do we do? Logically we don't do anything. But when we don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. The people who have tortured you, have troubled you, or made you unhappy, when you do not forgive them, they are very happy, but you become miserable. So in general you forgive everyone, in general. Again you don't have to think particularly who are the people who have troubled you, but in general you forgive everyone. This is a very important part of Sahaja Yoga because the center which is there, the optic chasm, as I said, the gate, is very constricted. And unless and you forgive everyone, I tell you, this center won't open out. And you don't want to miss out your Self-realization for these nonsensical people, those who have tortured you or your life and now also they are standing in the way. So just forgive them, all of them, together. These are the two conditions we have to fulfill. First is not to feel guilty at all and second is to forgive everyone in general. Just to say I forgive everyone, finished, nothing to do, just finished. Now, we have to use the Mother Earth and we have to use our left hand and right hand. The left hand is the one which is the power of desire, while Kundalini is the power of pure desire, the left hand is the power of desire and the right hand is the power of action. Now here we don't do much action but we can nourish our centers and also by this you will know how to date on 
raise your Kundalini again and again. So in this uh, program, we can combine both things together in a very simple manner. It's extremely simple. So first of all, we'll have to take out our shoes to take help from the Mother Earth. You can keep your socks, but shoes should be taken out. Now to put your left hand towards me, you can put it on your lap if you want to. This is symbolic that you, are, you have the desire, just symbolic, that you have a desire to get your Self-realization. So please put your left hand on your lap all the time, constantly. And now we have to use the right hand to nourish our centers. So first, I'll show you. There, will you come up, please? He will show you how to put your hands. This is all to be seen, first of all, and later on you have to close your eyes and then we'll work it out. First you have to put your hand on your heart. On your heart, because in the heart resides the Spirit. Now, if you are the Spirit, you are also your Master. And this power of mastery is within you. And the center of Master is on the left-hand side of your stomach, in the upper part, or you can call the abdomen. We are only working on the left-hand side with the right hand. So we put our hand on the upper portion of our abdomen, on the left-hand side. Please. Yeah. Now this is the center of our mastery. Then we put our hand in the low portion of our abdomen, in the low portion of our abdomen, on the left hand side. Now this is the center of pure knowledge. Pure knowledge means the one that manifests on your central nervous system. It's not the knowledge of your reading or your intellect, but is the knowledge that manifests on your central nervous system, is the pure knowledge. Then you raise your hand again on the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side, and then on your heart, then in the corner of your neck and your head, take it backwards as much as possible and then turn your head to your right. This is the center, we get caught up when you feel guilty and gives you lots of problems. This is the worst center and I see today also you all are catching it. So at the very outset, just know that you are not guilty at all. Please believe me, you are not guilty, it's your own mental idea. You are not at all guilty, you have done nothing wrong. All right. Then you take your right hand on top of your forehead across like this and put down your head and press it on both the sides. Now, this is the center where you have to forgive everyone. Now, take back your hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as much as possible, resting on the hand. And here, for your own satisfaction, you have to ask forgiveness from this divine power, just for your satisfaction so that you don't feel guilty at all. Now, you have to stretch your palm fully, fully stretch. And the center of your palm, you have to put on top of the fontanel bone area, which was a soft area when you were a child. Here. Now, put down your head and press back your fingers as far as possible. 
and move your hand move your hand in the clockwise manner put down your head and move your hand in clockwise manner very slowly so that you move the scalp with a pressure with a pressure push back your fingers so you put a proper pressure seven times clockwise that's all we have to do that's all now please put your feet on both the little away from each other because these are two powers as I told you now put the left hand towards me you may take out your spectacles because when you close your eyes you shouldn't open them till I tell you and it's better to take out your spectacles now please close your eyes you should be very pleasantly placed towards yourself because you are going to enter into the kingdom of God now put your right hand on your heart please here you have to ask me a very fundamental question three times you may call me Sri Mataji or you can call me mother mother am I the spirit ask in your heart not loudly three times mother am I the spirit if you are the spirit you are your master so now please take your right hand on the upper portion of your abdomen press it hard and here ask a question with deliberations you must ask another question mother am I my own master or mother am I my own guru ask this question three times Now I must tell you that I respect your freedom and the pure knowledge cannot be forced on you so you have to ask for it now please put your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard and here you have to say six times because this center has got six petals mother please give me pure knowledge you have to ask for it I cannot force on it. now don't feel guilty I feel you people are feeling guilty for everything there's no need to feel guilty at all with full confidence you ask for pure knowledge mother please give me pure knowledge you have to have full confidence in yourself this is what I have told you at the very outset that you all are capable of getting your self-realization so now we have to nourish our upper centers with self-confidence because when you asked for pure knowledge the Kundalini has started its movement upward now raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen and press it hard on the left hand side now here with full confidence you say ten times mother I am my own master or say mother I am my own guru say it ten times with full confidence which you are I have told you that the truth is that you are the pure spirit you are not this body you are not this mind you are not this intellect you are not these emotions but you are pure spirit 
So now, please raise your hand <coughs> and place it on your heart <coughs> and here, again you say with full confidence, Mother, I am the Spirit. Mother, I am the pure Spirit, please say it. The Divine Power is the ocean of knowledge and of love. It is the ocean of compassion and blessings. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. So whatever mistakes you might have committed, this ocean is so powerful that it dissolves all such mistakes into nothing. So please believe that you are not guilty at all of anything. Please. Now raise your hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right. And here you have to say with full confidence, please say it with full confidence sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say it sixteen times. This is the center you are catching very badly. Please say it sixteen times with full confidence. I assure you that you are not guilty of any mistakes, please, believe me. Ah. Sixteen times you have to say, Now, you have to forgive everyone. As I explained to you beforehand, that whether you forgive or you don't forgive, you don't do anything, but you play into wrong hands. So please, please, forgive everyone. Just forgive everyone without thinking about them, without counting them, just forgive everyone in general. Please do that. It will help you and help me a lot to open this center. Now, raise your right hand on your forehead across and put down your head and press on both the sides. At this center, You have to say with full confidence, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now, not how many times, but from your heart, believing in it, please say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now, for your own satisfaction, then I want you not to feel guilty at all, you put your right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible upward. Here, you have to say for your own satisfaction, not counting your mistakes or feeling guilty, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistakes, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. This also you have to say from your heart, not how many times. O oh, Divine Power, 
If I have done any mistakes, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Now, stretch your hand, your palm in such a way that your fingers are pushed back. Put the center of your palm exactly on the place known as the fontanelle bone area where you had a soft bone in your childhood. Now press it hard, push back your fingers, very important to push back your finger. Now put down your head as far as you can and carefully you have to move your scalp. But before that I have to tell you that I cannot force self-realization on you. I respect your freedom, you have to ask for it. So you move your right hand with big pressure on your scalp seven times slowly, clockwise, saying, Mother, please give me my Self-realization. Now, please take down your hands and slowly open your eyes. Now put your right hand towards me like this, little higher and put down your head and see for yourself, you have to certify. If there's a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your head, some people will get hot because the heat has to come out. Put down your head and see for yourself. Don't touch your head, little away. Some people get it very much further down, but still you can see it here. Now, don't touch, don't touch your head, don't touch. Take it further, it's not to touch. All right, now put your left hand towards me. Please put your left hand like this, like this, like this, left hand. Now put down your head and see for yourself, but not touching it further away. There should be a distance between your head and your hand. Please see now, is there a cool breeze or a hot breeze coming out of your head? Now, again the right hand. I put down your head again and see with the left hand. Now, put, put your both the hands, put up your both the hands like this, push back your head and ask a question, Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God? Or Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times. Put back your head and ask. Now, put down your head hands, please. Now you watch me without thinking, you can do it without thinking. Now those who have felt the cool or the hot breeze out of their heads or on their hands or fingertips, please raise both your hands, both your hands, both. 
Just imagine the whole of San Diego. May God bless you all. You felt it. So this is the city of devas, the city of gods. And now you are the saints, but you must look after your ascent and your fixing up the ascent. That's all you have to do. Little steadily, those who haven't got realization also, will, all of them get. You can go and see the people who are here. They have been working here for so many days, but what they say that people come here and then go to somewhere else and then go somewhere else. This is not the way it is going to work out. You must pay full attention and you must work it out throughout and master it, absolutely master it. You can do it, I know you can do it. It's very easy. So may God bless you all and next year I'll be again back here and see you all. May God bless you. Now use your hands, use your hands and see that how you can help people, how you can help yourself. They'll teach you everything, how to raise your Kundalini, the whole ten technique. As I told you that in the Vedas is written that you must know the mantra, yantra and tantra, three things after realization. That is the, oh, the mantra is the chanting, what is to be used for raising the Kundalini and tantra is the one which is the technique and yantra is the mechanism, everything you will know in no time. Only thing you should assiduously work it out and respect your Self-realization, respect yourself. You are very important. I think San Diego people are the most important people for the whole of America. Please, I hope you will not let me down. May God bless you. So I'm sorry, I forgot it.